Welcome compadres. Today we're just going to build off of our fastener and joint design video. We're actually going to go into Python and program an object oriented program and then show how to execute it and also show an application of why you'd want to program this way. Um, but today we're looking at our three classes and if you remember uh, in the previous videos on object oriented programming this first box up here is going to be our parameters and then this box down here we have to make a constructor where we pass in the parameters and then we have our methods down here that we calculate so the reason we do this UML diagram this way is because it helps us plan out how we're going to code it and it also helps us organize what we're going to do so it's always a great tool and I use it a lot I highly recommend doing this approach especially you know this works well for engineering applications uh, just remember parameters constructors and then functions to do your calculations and uh, you can pretty much make an object oriented program on anything uh, today we're going to look at three classes so we're going to look at our bolt bearing our shear tear out cases and then our fastener strength so we talked about these in the last video if you want to go look on the theorem if you want to go update you yourself with the theory on that, go back and watch that video. But before we go into the code, here's some terminology that we're going to use. Um, in the classes right here, we use some parameters called the nominal diameter and minimum diameter. And what I mean by that is quite simply that on this fastener, your major diameter is considered your nominal, and then your minor diameter is shown right here and we will you can find these parameters and look up tables so I'm not gonna go through that but uh, let's go ahead and step into the application and see how this is applied in Python so right now I'm going to show you how to translate the UML diagram to an object oriented program in Python so the first step you want to do when you start up Python is you want to import the classes you're going to use. So in this case we're doing a lot of math so I'm going to import the math class and also the NumPy libraries um, to, to help us calculate our, our functional values. And so if we go through this UML diagram the first thing we want to define is our class which is shown right here. I'm defining it as fastener calcs. That's a little bit different from fastener strength, but you get the point. The next thing is to define a constructor. So a constructor basically contains all these parameters right here that we use in this fastener calculation. And then we have some optional parameters here. Uh, safety factors defined as 1.15, but the user can put in a different value if they want. And then we have a shear yield and preload that has been assigned to a value of none so we have some if then logic to help us assign these parameters but we'll go ahead and define these parameters within the constructor so we define our yield stress we assign it a value our minimum diameters essentially every one of these right here and then we have our optional parameters up here if sure yield is equal to none then we basically assign it a value equal to the correlation we discussed in the video. If they do put in a value then we just assign the user defined value to the shear yield. And we do the same thing for preload. So we have our constructor, we've defined our parameters and assigned values to them. The next thing is to create our methods. And you're going to see here, these our methods are defined down here in this bottom box. And I couldn't fit every one of them in here, so we have some extra ones here. We have a get shear yield, which basically you can call this and figure out what shear yield you assigned to this shear yield parameter up here. We have an area calculation, a get preload, a total shear calculation, axial force, shear load ratio, axial load ratio, margin of safety. You know, you can make this as big as you want to, include as many calculations as you want to that utilize the parameters defined in the constructor. The next class we're going to build is bolt bearing. And you're going to come to realize that we basically just rinse and repeat. We use the same process. We define a constructor with our parameters 
and then we assign those parameters values that the user puts in and then we go and define our methods or functions and uh, in this case we're defining a bearing strength interpolation function because we have an upper and lower bearing strength they put a value if our e over d is is some that different value between 1.5 and 2 then we interpolate to get our bearing strength and then we have bearing area total shear margin of safety and then that's pretty much it so the same thing for shear tear out we define the class name define the constructor with the uh, input parameters and then we assign those parameters values from the constructor and then we create our functions that we use to perform our calculations so rinse and repeat you saw three examples of object-oriented programming there now we're gonna go ahead and step into Python and show how to call those uh, as they are in this code right here and then we're going to show an application by using a graphical user interface to calculate these values so that somebody else can use this application for their analysis so let's go ahead and see how this is applied in Eclipse so here's the code we worked through. We pulled it into a Python IDE. I pulled it into Eclipse. I really like this IDE. It works well with what I do. So now we're going to go ahead and do a calculation. We're going to work through and find out how to call these classes and how to make an object and then go ahead and reach in and get a value for margin of safety. So I've created a main test, and this is in the same project as our fastener calcs. And so the first step is to import the classes and the objects, or actually you're just pulling in the classes, the fastener calcs, shear tear out, and bolt bearing. Next thing is to create an object here. So I've created a object defined as X that reaches out and calls the faster calcs class and it has these input parameters so these are the definitions of those parameters I've written it down here and put in some values for those parameters and then after I defined an object X using the class faster calcs then I can reach in and call any of those methods that I outlined in that class in this case we're calling out margin of safety and we can get a value for that so we do the same thing for a shear tear out our shear tear out class takes in these inputs and then we assign Z we create a Z object that calls the shear tear out class and creates a new object with these parameters and then we print a margin of safety and the same for bolt bearing these are the parameters in that class. We create a object called T that calls the bolt bearing class and then it assigns parameters or these, provides these inputs and creates the object and, pre, and prints a margin of safety. So we've defined, we've created objects and we're going to determine our margin of safety for each of those objects. So if we press play we run main and there's an error here but I think it's because I forgot to comment that out and then we press this and it returns our margins of safety for X which is going to be 13.17 Z 4.17 and T 0.875 so that's how you utilize the object-oriented code to create objects and then go ahead and pull out values from those methods that were created. So really that's cool and everything. You can do an Excel spreadsheet and do the same thing, but where the real power comes in is you can actually create a user interface 
and that's what I'm going to show next. So we're going to go ahead and step into that. So after developing that object-oriented programming code, now I can create an executable. So I've created an executable here using PyQt. Essentially what it is, it's, it's just a calculator, but there's more power using the object-oriented programming approach to do this type of stuff than there is just doing hard code is things. So I'm going to give you an example once this thing pulls up and you'll see what I'm talking about. So the interface pulled up here and we have defined basically a calculator to do our fastener and joint calculations. We have our tabs up here, fastener analysis, shear tear out, bolt bearing. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm taking advantage of that object oriented program in that I am have my inputs here and then I put in these inputs and then I calculate a margin so it does that get function get safety margin to get our value so let's just put in some parameters here let's just say um, you know our yield stress is 80,000 psi for a fastener and we're, we have a number two fastener so a number two fastener the nominal diameter is going to be 0 0.0860 and then a shear force let's just say you know I don't know 500 pounds and then 750 an axial force of I don't know 600 safety factor will keep that there a shear yield um, let's just say it's approximately half of that so 40,000 and then a preload I don't know let's just say 100 pounds. And you can calculate a margin and you can see here um, you know it'll specify the value whether it's negative or positive so obviously this fastener couldn't take that load so we can use a bigger fastener say a number 8 screw. That's still not big enough anyways you can play what if here you know a quarter inch screw and we've finally gotten to positive territory but even more so um, you know you can make a cool fancy calculator like this for each of these which is done here but what's even cooler is because you've created an object oriented program you can actually go in and create a bunch of inputs and then create a bunch of objects to calculate those results. So what do I mean by that? So for example, um, let's say we have our fastener calcs. We've created a spreadsheet that defines those inputs. You know, yield stress, minimum, diameter, shear one, shear two, you know, everything in um, in this column right here. We've put them in rows. So basically we went to our finite element program and we've gotten our shear one and shear two. We can in our axial components. We've specified our preload, our shear yield, safety factors, everything. So now we can go, you know, pull this in. So this spreadsheet right here. That's the same as this over here. Um, I gotta close the file first. okay so we pull it in and we can you'll see over here when we submit this that it will return another spreadsheet called shear tension results we can open that up and we've returned our margin of safety for each of those fasteners so I think we had see that's a lot of fasteners we created here so we have 202 fasteners and we put in we should have put in 202 fasteners but so yeah we did 202 so that's the advantage that's a cool thing about object oriented programming is you can 
create the code and then you can specify records and then get values of, of all those records if you know what I mean by that so um, we did that the same thing for shear tear out bolt bearing we created a calculator for that to do the exact same thing um, but that's pretty cool and in future video I may go into the code a little bit more to show how that's done but that's an application that's a feasible application in engineering and why you should learn object oriented programming so guys I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time adios